Hey everybody, this is Peter Pagliani of Human Art Studio, and this is Making Comics and Art, episode 169. And I'm here with Allison McClellan of Hi. Alley Cat. Yep, Alley Cat Comics. That's right, with an X. Yep. And know, I actually... I <laughs> Put some links down below so people can go follow you places. Fantastic. You got it down the doobly doo. Uh, yeah. Um so <laughs> as I was mentioning uh in our in our green room chat, um yeah, I get together with the uh, weekdays with Zoe Bones. And uh, we were totally out of control today, and I totally lost track of time. And I was like, "Oh, it's time for the show." <laughs> Gonna ditch me? <laughs> See how it is. Never, never, never. <laughs> I might have to ditch you Wednesday, though. That's fine. Um, Don't know, yet, but I might have to. Might not be a true ditching. <laughs> not a true ditching, just a oh, kind of ditching. ditching. So kind of ditching. Oh, my mom wants to have dinner, and I'm just trying to find out the time. So, no problem. No problem. Um, oh, I, I forgot to hit my button. Forgot to hit your button. Um, Oh, everything's an issue. Everything. Come on, move, move. There we go. Okay. Um, I got to open up my webcam program every freaking time so that it doesn't autofocus because every time it autofocuses, it just goes in and out of focus. Oh, it's yeah. stupid. Yep. I can respect that. Yeah, so... Um, and I meant to do this other thing, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Okay. I am good. Um, yeah, so that's happening earlier. Um, uh, I've been working on the, uh, Mavericks cover that I, I previously inked. Uh, I did a little live streaming the other day on Facebook. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 I must admit, what's it? I think I saw you doing a little live streaming on Facebook. Um, I was busy, so I couldn't stop by, but I think I saw you went live. Yeah. Oh. Um, and I, I like, I, I didn't check to see the CD quality or anything, which I, sh I should do at some point. Um, but I do like the way it's set up now as opposed to previously. Um, because I, I, I stream directly because Facebook does give you, um, you know, more of a behind the scenes, um, grasp of what's going on, how many people are watching, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, like. That's that's my only positive on Facebook. I hate what they did with with pages, which makes me want to combine all my pages into one. Yeah. Um. That you know, like you have to click out of your profile page to go to one of your pages, and I have multiple pages, and it's yeah. such a pain in the ass, and it's not great for sharing and. I don't see any advantage and I think there's less traffic because of it and it's more penny ass. Um, that's one thing. <laughs> I have, I have a, a number of complaints on Facebook lately. Uh, yeah. well, I got it. I mean, I'm not really the hugest fan of Facebook, so I use it because well, all my friends are on it and I mainly just post my art and stupid cat pictures, so. Mm. There's no such thing as stupid cat pictures. Okay, 
fun with that pictures of them being stupid. Yeah, there you go. Kitty kitties are always a positive. Um, but yeah, the the, the streaming on, on the uh, sort of the our side of it, um, I kind of like it, uh, you know. But I definitely have to go look at the quality of the video because it was giving it basically it was popping up uh constantly because you know my internet is not the strongest my computer is not the strongest and it was giving me red sign outs. um hmm. but so you know it was kind of cool though. yeah um so yeah, my, my current issue is um, for a lot of my fine fine work, I've been using this, which is Rotoring Rapidograph Technical Pen to some people, uh, and this is a, a, a 0.25 that I use for the very very fine line work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to a certain degree, I could use a quill. Um, but just using the technical pen is a lot quicker, especially with more technical oriented stuff, which is a lot of what's on the cover. Yeah. Um, it's just a heck of a lot easier and faster with the technical pen. Um, but I've been having issues with it, with mine. I actually have, I have two of those. I have two the same one and both of them are, are freaking bleeding and it's like I don't know if I could do these lines elsewise you know like um, I might have to try to, to fake it with a quill it, it'll take me a little longer and I'll have to be extra careful um, with the line work um, mm -hmm. but I kind of don't have a choice at the moment because uh, I have to order some supplies, um, some ink. Uh, I, I guess eventually I'm going to have to get a new cool uh, technical uh, pen point uh, again. Mm. Sucks, cool. but... Uh, <laughs> this is one of the things yeah. I love about working digitally. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there is that about traditional that you know, the uh, the cost is definitely a factor. Um, I need paper. I need you know blah 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 ink for my printer, and now I need technical pen points. Oh, I need ink for my printer too right now, so I know that pain. <laughs> um. But I need to get this cover finished so I can ship that out. Um, and I got other things waiting in the wings above and beyond that. Hmm. But I'm here as usual. Uh, recently, you know, I got back to working on this book, which is designated. Um, is not not a official logo i just kind of made one for the thumbnail um if i ever get an official logo for it then i'll, I'll switch it out mm -hmm. um but i also want to mention to you like you're doing artwork here i should put you on the thumbnail covers so whatever you're working on while we stream mm -hmm. if you could send me a, a snapshot of that however you want to do that yeah, I can do that. Uh, and I'll, no problem. Yeah. I'll include that on the cover because, you know, more artwork, it sells. It sells the video. <laughs> amazing how that works. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, we're here, we're here today to talk about deadlines. So, uh, like, I'm, I'm overbooked and overwhelmed and... Got a lot of things I got to knock out and, and get out. Uh, I got packages to ship this week. I got 
too much to do, quite honestly. And I feel like I've been under the gun since uh, since before the summer, honestly. <laughs> no, I can relate to that. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to get control of it somehow, some way this month because I'm not ending this month in the same shape come hell or high water as they say yep I can appreciate that so you know it's like I definitely like when it comes to deadlines I am 50-50 like, I uh, try to make deadlines. I am not the fastest inker in the West or East or anywhere. Um, mm. But, you know, I, I, I try my best. And, and lately, you know, like, I got too much on my plate. People understand that. And it's, it's great that people understand my, my schedule and my workload and, and all that. But at the same time, it's like I would like to be far far more on top of things than I currently am. Um, but that's what next year is going to be about, about really getting a lot of work done and clearing out my schedule. Uh, this, this is, this is the place and time where I start saying no to new work. Mm -hmm. Um, because I have been saying yes and it's not doing me any favors. So. Yeah, I can I can respect that. I'm actually not taking commissions right now because I'm trying to complete a bunch of things and work on nightmare stuff. So yeah, I kind of know how you feel there. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna also figure out how I'm going to be paying for my medical insurance. So. Uh oh. Yeah. Just, in all honesty, I'll be paying more. I, I got a lot of it straightened out today. Um, like what's fully going on with it. And I think, quote unquote, I think that um, I'll actually be paying less in the long run now. Oh, good. Uh, well, like uh, we should mention, uh, much like myself, I believe I put your Patreon in link in in the video description, so people yeah. can go there and support your work. You know, it's like I, I know in my case, like a lot of the people that are are my patrons are people that just want to support all I do. Like you know, whether yeah. I'm drawing and, and posting online or, or doing these live streams and like so it's not necessarily that they're they're getting something specifically on uh, um, although I, I did start re something just the other day where I'm going to try to do a drawing a day uh, most you know like yesterday's and today's are, are more like sketches but uh, I do want to do uh, finished drawings eventually uh, mm -hmm. when I when I get up to speed with that, so that that will be something I'm offering there specifically. Um, but it's also to get me in a habit of drawing more because you know I got not only the next issue of retro I'll be drawing, but I got. I got to do the zero issue before that. I got a backup story to another book I'll be publishing. Um, and yeah, a couple of, of short things uh, that I'll be drawing. So I want to get my drawing chops up to speed. Uh, and also just, in a, in just get in the habit of drawing more. You know, it usually does wonders for, for the quality of my work uh, since I don't. I don't draw as much as I ink. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that yeah, you know, drawing more should definitely help. Um, because there's always a good reason to draw more. 
Mm. Yeah. So I'm being being harder on myself to to yeah improve. Um, once I really do catch up on, on a number of projects, at some point next year I'm gonna get more and more into training mode. Uh, mm. Not only do I have a number of art books, but I'll be uh, doing a bunch of other things in regards to improvement of my artwork. Um, you know, even though I, I can probably like dish out a, a book without any further training or or, or learning or anything, but um, I, I know I want to up my quality. So mm. I <laughs> I've met so many more amazing artists, and it's like, damn, these people are amazing. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I know that feeling. I constantly find artists. I'm just like. Teach me. <laughs> Show me the ways of the force. Yes. So, yeah, I saw that you streamed uh, with Rich the other day. Yep. I was on on Sunday, and I streamed earlier today with him. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to so, try to make uh, Sunday next week, too. Yeah, so that's, that's Rich Parada. Yep. If you if you don't remember, if you haven't seen the last episode, you talked about it then. Uh, and you, were the other people in the stream people you knew or new people nope. you met? met? I, I met everyone there. Um, I came late, so I didn't really get the like the official introductions. But right. um, it was all it was all good. It's always fun streaming new people and old friends. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I want to do more um, sort of group streams, like uh, something I started recently, two, two different things. One... One is Pimp Your Comic, which is uh, something I did originally on Facebook as, as just a post and ask people to give me a link or a picture to the com their comic that they wanted to promote. Um, and I turned it into sort of a, a video format where I have people come on. It's an open stream and they can talk about it and show off artwork and maybe show a link where you can buy it or if it's crowdfunding where people can pledge um, and yeah I did a couple of those and those went pretty well I want to eventually get back to that um, and another thing is just a, a straightforward art stream where mm. myself and whoever shows up draws something <laughs> yeah and those are always fun usually uh, get more views on something like that than anything else. Mm, I could see that. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And, you know, with, with Pimp Your Comic, people love to promote themselves, so <laughs> that's an easy yep. sell. <laughs> Here, talk about your shit. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, it's I, I'm always trying to push people on to uh, coming on and talking about what they're working on. And, you know, not everybody is, you know, there's a lot of people who are camera shy and, and whatever. And it's like, you know, that's fine. Be, you know, be camera shy, be, you know, but like making product, you know, come and talk about your product and, you know, get over yourself. <laughs> Because, <laughs> yep. uh, you know, growing up, I was I was a shy kid and uh, totally, totally 
get that, you know, for whatever reason, like, you know, I've, I've, you know, I'm not an actor, but I, I, I've been part of a, a few off Broadway plays back in the day, mm. you know, being from okay. New York. Um, well, I, I was more the uh, technical staff, <laughs> mm. uh, but you still, you still get, um, man, I had butterflies like <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, I got to turn on the lights at the exact time. I got to do the sound at the exact time and that sort of thing. And, yeah. um, you know, but it, it was a, it was a great fun experience. Um, and I, I got to see actors like really working on, on their craft as well as trying to make the, the play better before it went live. Um, that was exciting. That was a lot mm -hmm. of fun. You know, you see them really go out of their minds and attack each other. <laughs> you know, like, no, we should do it this way. And, uh, <laughs> we should block it out this, this scene this way. And, you know, it's really creative. <laughs> hmm. I could see that. That could be interesting. Yeah. Uh, At which point they did, they um they surpassed cannibalism. But... <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man, it's it. You know, with actors, it's all about egos and. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's... But you know, it's like we we do comics, and you know, it's like I plan to work with teams, people, and you have to work with everybody's sort of different personality and, and you know it's all it's all learning experience and, and fun to me <laughs> oh no i agree i like working with other people i like the idea of having a virtual bullpen and kind of working on pro comics and stuff so it's like doing random bits of art yeah But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, I was expecting today to be not so nice. Um, it was like, I looked at the weather earlier. Um, I mean, I guess I'm talking off top now, but, um, <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, we, do we have any viewers? Hope so. We, we, we have a couple of people watching. Nobody's, uh, spoken up Nobody's yet. Talking, but, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I looked at the weather earlier and like it said 65 and that was like early this morning, like six or seven o'clock. Um, and then they said it went down in temperature throughout the day, but that hasn't been the case and it's actually sunny out. So it's actually turned out to be a nice day today. Uh, I, ha I haven't spent a second outside yet. <laughs> I'll probably go out a little bit later, at least to get in a walk and stuff, exercise. Um, What's that? Uh, you know, it's it's that thing you do when you're caught up on your work. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to get some air, so I'm not like just 24/7 sitting at my desk. Oh no, I don't blame you. Um, was it I? Since I'm mobility restricted, I have to be kind of cautious going outside and things. But I did go outside today because right. every person messed up my order and delivered it to the wrong uh -oh. place, not following instructions. Oh no! Which is great because I'm only supposed to walk about 200 feet, and I had to walk a bit more than that. Oh boy. boy. Yep. Any delivery person gets automatic five stars in all reviews if they can put what I order where I tell them. Yeah. Follow instructions, people. <laughs> it's not hard. Uh, I know in, in, in the town I am in, these food places are short-staffed. So, uh, and we don't necessarily have, do we have delivery people? I, I forget. I don't think so. I don't think that's an option here. 
Um, I know uh, recently, like Walmart and uh, the other place I keep forgetting the name to, but uh, similar. Uh, well, it's a food place. It's a um, supermarket. Um, Charles but they, they, they started um, where you can place your order online and just go pick it up. Like they'll deliver it to your car. So mm -hmm. you don't have to go in. Um, but that's that's about as delivery as, as this place gets. Yeah, you live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pretty much. Um, it's not super, super country, but you know, it's not New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's all you need to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I live in a city. It's a small city, but I live in a city in Massachusetts. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I have the benefits of city stuff. Yeah. 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 Public there's, public no, <laughs> there's no delivery. There's no like buses or trains or even cabs um you either walk or you have your own car uh yeah i have thankfully i have a car <sighs> oh, i have a friend who has a car <laughs> it's my transportation i don't walk places myself nothing wrong with that no It's the whole one hand washes the other, you know, strategy mm -hmm. over here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, my cats were going insane this morning, which is good, you know, I got you got to give them attention at some point and and it's it's good to uh, start the day with hanging out with them giving them some play time and uh, mm. feed them in the morning yeah my two are currently sleeping on my bed yeah my, uh, I have Two in and two out. So the ones inside are sleeping. The ones outside, who knows? <laughs> You're four. Damn. Yeah. Well, one one I'm currently fostering. So. Oh. Okay. So it's typically Please. it's three. Um. Yeah, and uh, actually, I'll I'll switch out the cat I do have with a more of a kitten uh once the kitten gets fixed hmm. so so you're you know, a crazy cat, cat i do got it yeah yeah cat whisperer cat guy cat daddy you know all those <laughs> yeah i got my two and um i've often said i have room in my home for one more but it has to be more like an emergency situation. Uh, right. Like I'm not actively looking for a third cat. Yeah. I mean, I, w I wasn't looking for this cat. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of, it's, it's more difficult for me. Um, but it was like some people moved out of town. And so... I took it in until we can find a, a, a forever home for it. Yep. Well, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Super sweet cat. A little bizarre. Um, <laughs> yeah. Si Siamese cat. Uh, oh. <laughs> this is no more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're weird. 
I love them. Yeah. Uh, they're weird. It's the first cat, you know, I have since seen a video actually where a cat did this, but I have never previously seen a cat where it's giving biscuits, but its back legs are moving at the same time. <laughs> so front front paws are going, back legs are going. It was like, wait, what are, what are you doing? I, It was like I was laying in bed. Um, and I wasn't, was I going to sleep or waking up one, one or the other? Um, and it started doing biscuits and then it's lit, back legs were moving. And I was like confused as to what was happening. I was like, are you taking a dump on me? I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> That's most definitely a thing. <laughs> oh. God, that's funny. So yeah, everybody's wondering, like, if you have any questions or comments of your own, you want to promote what you're working on, where people can find you online, you know, we're well, easy here. I don't bite much. Yeah. I totally bite, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that about you. Oh, uh, really? Yep. Is it all, all over the interwebs? It's all over the interwebs. <laughs> it's out there in interweb land. Oh, man. Uh, oh, yeah. So I mentioned before, uh, I have a guest coming tomorrow. Or if I didn't mention it, I had it in my brain to mention um, okay, so Justin Belmont will be here, uh, and we'll be starting at 4 o'clock, um, and he'll be promoting uh, two new books that um, he's done work on, and um, it's, it's simply to get sign-ups for uh, his book. Uh, one of them, I think, uh, or, or it's both of them, maybe, mm. or yeah, I think, I think it's both for, for one campaign kind of thing. So one of the books is called When I is Werewolf. The other book is Smokes the Fox. Hmm. Um, well, both sound so both, both are hybrid animal human combos um that are part of project minotaur um and yeah so it, it's like the it's not just two separate books it's actually two books that are are, are in the same universe and same story going on mm. but each each book focuses on their individual adventures um and uh, Smokes the Fox is a pot smoking, bike riding fox. <laughs> um, oh, you know, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, uh, Weaponized Werewolf is, uh, I guess, a, we a weaponized werewolf. <laughs> is there any other kind asking for a friend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be cool. I'll have yeah. to see the stuff and um, go from there. Yeah, um, yeah. I so had an he's, idea. He's looking. Hmm? He's looking for. He, 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 yeah, he's just looking for uh, more more people to do some to sign up. Uh, if he gets enough people signed up, he'll, it will crowdfund earlier. I think is his goal. So 
okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. I had an idea for a um like a, a monster comic that featured basically like, you know, the your stereotypical monster characters like, you know, Frankenstein's monster, the wolfman, stuff like that. And I was calling it the universals. Right. <laughs> uh, we would, I wonder if that would you can get sued for that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm probably too small to care. <laughs> well, yeah, is that too? But uh, you never know. It might it might be a huge hit, and then you're in trouble. <laughs> you might have changed the name. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm not that worried about it, but hey, it's a, yeah, it's like that'd be clever. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see where that would be a hit. You know, people, <laughs> people love monsters. Um, you know, monster type characters. I I intend to eventually get around to doing uh, one with a friend of mine. Will be be co-writing and I'll be doing it as a serial comic you know meaning it will be out weekly or bi-weekly some sort of schedule like new new chapters of it mm. you know I'm talking like a six pages at a time or something um, but I you know I don't have the time right now so I'm holding off on it but uh, really looking forward to that should be a lot of fun. Just something like, kind of like, because one of my big influences, specifically, you know, as an artist, but specifically as an inker, was uh, Bernie Wright. So he's oh, all about monsters. I love monsters. this book so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I thought of something, and I call it Nice Monster. And uh, yeah. Eventually, uh, people be able to uh, find out what that's all about. So I um, I don't know if you do anything with like Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that. But I have not. <laughs> I um, was it my one of the campaigns I was running? There's a character class that's called a warlock. And they basically pledge themselves to some type of an entity in exchange for power. Well, one of the entities that somebody had pledged to was the monster under the bed. Mm. I thought it was an interesting idea the way they, they did it. So That sounds cool. I'm going to have to yeah. draw that at some point. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, I, 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 I missed the... Uh... Like I, none of my friends that I knew of were into Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you know, I appreciate the the game and all that, but uh, just just didn't get to into it as a kid, and I'm too confused <laughs> to do it as an adult. It's <laughs> not that hard. You roll a die, you add a number, and then you you tell me what happens. That's that's all it is. Like, all right. just tell me. And I'll tell you what happens. Uh, it's it's like um, the trick with me watching sports is I have to do it with people who understand the game. <laughs> uh, yep, that's generally how everybody yeah. starts playing D and D and other games like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so maybe I'll I'll join you on game night one day. That's fine. If, yeah, You're more than welcome. Cool, cool. Okay, I got one of my little Cthulhu beasties done. Sweet. Yeah, I did something a little bit different. I put the tentacles below its mouth. <laughs> I was just like, what if it uses the tentacles to, like, shove the food into its mouth. <laughs> it's like, that can be kind of fun. Like, it doesn't look right in front of you. 
All right. Oh, so they aired a teaser trailer. It won't be out for a year. Uh, I don't know if you've seen oh, uh, this. Despite it yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, across the Spider Verse. I'm so excited. Yeah, the first one is fantastic. And, and like, I, I've heard a lot of people, like, that's the my favorite Spider Man movie. Like, and I totally understand that. And it's like, my favorite, it's my favorite superhero movie. <laughs> I love Spider-Man. Ooh, we got yeah. Skull Diamond 94. Say hello to Peter. Welcome, um, welcome. It's uh, Evan. Uh, he's a fellow comic creator. Yeah, I clicked on his name. <laughs> okay. There, okay. We, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it didn't let me... Okay, then does I did it. it. All right, there we not go. Not let you? Oh, okay, you did it. Okay. Yeah, it did it. It was just acting weird. Yeah, it was just acting weird for me. Maybe, maybe we can't do it at the same time because <laughs> I did it. Yeah, that, that could have been that. We're both like, oh, there's a post. We will click it. <laughs> we will click Somebody showed it. up. Somebody likes us. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the cat just jumped up on my table. No, no, they like you. They said nothing to me. I feel sad. Well, they're new to you. Introduce yourself, you know. They'll, like they'll get that you're here. Well, I, well, I mean, maybe he just showed up. You don't know. I know, I'm just joking around. <laughs> Hello, I'm here too. Allison, doing comic stuff. It's all fun and games. Hmm. I figure say hi. Oh, since I am doing digital. Oh. There you go. I like this view because you can see Peter's thing in mine. <laughs> so that will work. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's a view options. and Okay, good. Cat's going into other room. I kind of get panicked when they just kind of hover over you, behind you, or stuff. <laughs> oh, oh God, yes, yes. <laughs> Especially uh, when I have ink out. It's like, I, I prefer you where I could see you at a distance. <laughs> yep. Whenever I was working traditionally, you know, and one of the cats came near, is like, no. No. Don't don't dip your paws in the ink. No. Because <laughs> yeah, they will. Look, you got a personalized hello. Look at that. Check that Yay. out. Thank you. <laughs> I feel so much better now. <laughs> My super fragile ego. Not really. But <laughs> I can make but I can make a mountain out of a mole. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, that that's actually the new the new cat, uh the Forster I have at the moment. Hmm. Whose name name is Simba. Simba's a sweetheart. Hmm. Um and he was going like insane playing this morning. I thought he'd be out for at least six or eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they get. Oh, God, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's funny. He's a player. <laughs> Like likes the springs and strings and balls and toys. Hmm. 
Yeah. What was it? Um, me and my cat Rocket loves to play. <laughs> Especially at like three in the morning. Yeah. The three a.m. I mean, <laughs> cats are wonderful about playing on their own. You know, I, I definitely take time to interact with them, but not all of them need, you know, like a partner. <laughs> they just go nuts on their own. Yep. Yeah. Hence the 3 a.m. freak out. Yes. And then they do the wonderful thing of um, when they get up near you and they have to put their ass in your face. It's like, check out my ass. <laughs> get a load of this. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's like, this is my ass. And I want you to see it. <laughs> no, nope, lost a viewer. That was probably my fault right there. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Talking about looking at kitties' asses. <laughs> Yeah, we get deep here on the channel. <laughs> yes, we <like deep laughs> George Carlin. So. Uh, now that's a comedian I miss. Yeah. I always loved Carlin. It's funny. Dad and I loved him. Yeah, what's really sad is like the the last thing he that I seen him in was like Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> yeah, probably was. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, he had a great career, and the last thing bit part in the movie. No, he was in um, what was it? He was in Dogma. He like played the cardinal in Dogma, and. That was funny. <laughs> that was very Dog, funny. Yeah, the dogma was good. I don't, I don't think it did well, um, and I've I've forgotten most of it, but I, I definitely remember enjoying it. Yeah, I laughed really hard at dogma. That was one of the few times where I got in on a screening. You know, I was living in New York, and and. Uh, met somebody who uh, worked the screening and she let me in and, and it was like one of those theaters with you know it had 30 or 40 seats and that was it and hmm. they were all super plush and it was a small personalized theater oh well, those um, ones are great yeah yeah and and it was like I don't know. They must have done it in shifts. There were, there were maybe four other people in the whole place. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I got in on ground floor. This is amazing. Um, so it was a great viewing experience. Hmm. Yeah. No, that yeah. sounds like it'd be really fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, they premiere a lot of stuff in New York and you know, like I gotten I got into a couple of things. Like, you know, probably the best experience I had was uh I went to get I I got a chance to see um Sin City when it premiered mm -hmm. in New York. Um you know, and it was it was at a regular theater, but it was it was closed to just there was like you know, had passes to get in. Right. Uh, and Frank Miller introduced the film. So that was oh, pretty amazing. Awesome. That is awesome. And yeah, and it was an after party and he was hanging out at the after party too. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um no matter how crazy Frank Frank gets, I'll always love his work. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, it's like, I know a lot, there's a lot more people that are super critical about creators and, and their, their points of view and, and whatnot. Um, frankly, I'm all about, you know, the art, you know, as long yeah. as they're not a mass murderer or whatever, like, <laughs> yeah, no. you know. Yeah, that's generally my way of looking at it. And unless you're like 
unless you're pretty much completely irredeemable, I don't care. As long as as long as the products yeah. are cool. um, uh, I mean there's certain things people can say that'd be like, Yeah, I won't buy that, but you know, whatever. But it's right. it's hard to tick me off to that level. Yeah, it's it's just a weird weird time <laughs> right now where, where everything's more a lot more a lot more PC and a lot more people care about like who who's delivering what in a sense like you know what well you know I want to see that movie but I don't know the director kind of said something crazy on Twitter <laughs> it's like so. <laughs> It, well, it depends what they said into the level it is. Like, um, so this is an author I generally don't read anything by them. Uh, Orson Scott Card. Mainly okay. because he's so homophobic, it's like painful. So I just don't buy his books. Um, and frankly, the ones that I read before I knew that, I wasn't that entertained to begin with. So, I mean, I know a lot of people like Ender's game and stuff. I was like, yeah, that's okay. But yeah, yeah, I just I like it. So it's <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, H.P. Lovecraft was racist for his time. If he was alive today, doubting <laughs> the stuff that he did then, I probably wouldn't buy it. Right. Time. But he's dead. He can't make anything off of it, so I don't care. <laughs> so. Yeah. If he was alive today, he would be a ter- totally different person. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I used to have a lot of respect for J.K. Rawlings. Then she came out to be okay. a an asshole. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I just won't buy any of your new books. Not a big deal. They really weren't that good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen I haven't seen her around in years. And, uh... Uh, she does. She's doing like, um, she's like a pri- she has like a private investigator character or something like that that she writes about now, um, which is fine. I mean, she moved away yeah. from Harry Potter. I mean, her storylines yeah. are always generic. It was the the char- her writing of characters always been really good though. Right. Um, I mean, I read a lot of books, so um, yeah. Like, I think this is right <laughs> seventy. So. <laughs> I mm. wish, man. I, you know, even when I was reading a lot of uh, novels, I, I never read that much. But uh, uh, you know, I've read, I've read a lot in my time for for an average person. Um, mm. You know, I, I need to force myself back into reading, and I, I do every now and then. But my schedule's gotten out of hand. But I will get back to reading. Heck, you know, it's like there's so many uh, books pledged to crowdfunders that I have that I haven't read. So I'll probably do that first. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like um, one of my favorite authors is Brandon Sanderson. Um, from my understanding, he's a Mormon. Mormons have some pretty crazy beliefs. I don't mm. care. His books are cool. So. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. Actually, one of my best friends is, um, she was raised as a Mormon. I don't know if she considers herself a Mormon now, but I mean, it's like, whatever. So, actually, and I yeah. think uh, Tyler Carpenter's a Mormon, and, you know, he, he, he's a friend. I don't care. So, you know, you can have some pretty yeah. crazy yeah. beliefs. I don't care. So, as long as they're not affecting me. Totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, I'm, I, I, well, uh, you know, I was, I was brought up Christian and, uh, I had a friend who his name was Peter too. Um, and he was Christian, but he was Christian in a way that I don't like where he kind of forced his, his beliefs and, and thoughts and everything on other people. It's like, you know, whatever your religion, that's cool. But don't, like, try to make me into don't, that, yeah, too. Don't preach. You know? <laughs> don't yeah. preach. I don't care. Yeah. I, said, I went to Catholic school. 
going to Catholic school cured me of my Catholicism. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I went to, uh, what do they call it? Night, not night school, but just I, I, I had one class throughout the week, and that was after my regular school. Mm. But uh, my brother, my brothers were all went to Catholic school. <laughs> Not yeah, me though; but... they couldn't afford it. <laughs> yeah, we had um, oh, what was it? I remember there was um the after school, uh, Catholic school thing that people would go to the night school CCD or something, and I remember we just referred to it as Central City Dump. So. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like we get off at school at three o'clock. I think I had a class from three to however it was, however long, like maybe an hour and a half. I'm not yeah, sure. I forget. Like that. But um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't evening or anything. It was just right after regular school. Um, yeah, I remember. I, I barely. I had to do that during good. confirmation time. So. Uh, mm. yeah. Tell tell me this, like. Confirmation, um, I got to pick my own middle name. Do girls get to do that too? Yep, we, yeah. have, we get to pick a confirmation name. Like, I already have a, a middle name. Then you get to pick a confirmation right. name, um, which you want it to be like a biblical name, um, typically. So, yeah, there was that. We had, we had to do that. And um, I think there was a different color robe that girls wear trying to remember yeah i'm pretty hmm. sure i had to wear a white robe or something where boys wear a red one i think i don't remember i know first Maybe. communion i forget no first communion <laughs> the girls all had to wear wet white dresses yeah. oh. well, I, I just remember oh that's cool we get to pick our own middle name you know and i was the same i had a middle name um and uh because i had no m imagination at the time or in that moment i was like well i have two best friends one's richard one's michael i'll go with michael <laughs> michael's a very common one to go with yeah. um, i know like every other boy had michael for their middle for their confirmation name that's funny <laughs> But I, I always thought I should have picked, like, Oscar, even though that's not biblical, but not that I know of. But um, I don't think my, there's my, an Oscar my, in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> or Saint. My <laughs> Saint Oscar. Um, the but my initials would, my initials would have been P L O P. <laughs> okay, that would have been awesome. <laughs> Just for that reason. <laughs> but, but, you know, I thought of that after the fact. But <laughs> hmm. uh, no, I went with Joan. St. <laughs> Joan? Yep. St. Joan you know? of Arc. Yeah, okay. Mainly because I thought she was badass. She's like a 14 year old girl who fought the British. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunate ending. Oh, you know. Can't win them all. Set on fire for heresy. Yeah, it was between St. Joan and St. Catherine were the two I was thinking I was going to go with. I decided Joan. Honestly, it wasn't that hard of a decision. <laughs> oh, so um, I just want to confirm, like, we're already at uh, 5 o'clock, so, yeah, we're just about at one hour. You said you mm -hmm. can go longer today? Sure, if you want to. I'm fine with yeah. that. Yeah, I'll go go another hour. Yeah, be a cool. good time. Not, not that I have an you know more to say or 
<laughs> but like you know, we I mean, want this we're already do talking long, about long. religion. I mean, do we want to get into politics next? <laughs> no, no, not particularly. No, just no. <laughs> The answer is a hard no. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like the the only thing I really say about being brought up Christian and religion is that you know I'm I'm not religious. You know, my mom was very li- religious. I have three older brothers that are living. Um, and I don't, I don't think any of them are super religious. Um, but it's like, I, I do believe in like a lot of the good stuff that comes from being Christian. And, you know, like I, I did enjoy at times like the, you know, the priest saying, you know, going on for hours <laughs> talking. Uh, but that, you know, that it's all, it's all about, you know, be, be good to your neighbor, be, you know, be a good person, do good things, yada, yada. Yeah. That's, that's about I'm the, the except. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, um, I just refused to, to categorize myself because that's, is a whole group of people that are like, I'm hardcore atheist, and it's like, yeah, it's, I don't necessarily want to put myself there either, you know. Oh, no, well, my my general rule of being an atheist is, um, don't preach to me, and I won't ruin your religion with science. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. I'm, I'm more science than religion, so I hear you. Yeah. After studying, um physics at a higher level and other other bits of science that completely removed religion as a factor to me so are you, are you like an a student or, or you took lots of advanced courses or something uh yep and i went to basically the technical college in this in the world which is i have no idea <laughs> What's that? MIT. Oh, M- okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, cool. I studied physics yeah. and computer science. I basically didn't use any of the physics stuff I studied for and only did computer science things. Well, I'm sure it's like informed your, your comic work. Oh, God, it has. Like, um, <laughs> a bunch of Nightmare's backstory is based on things that are actually out in space. So, cool. That's awesome. Particularly the things beyond the void. The void is an actual thing. Nice. Uh, ben- Bete Void or something. I can't remember the name of it. And I always have to Google the name because I can't remember it. But it's literally this area of space that's just empty. There's nothing there for light years. It's this big, dark spot in the universe. There's more than one, but there's one in particular that I'm referring to. Right. And say if the planet Earth was in that void uh, someplace, right. we wouldn't have realized that there was anything outside of that void until the 1960s, because that's when we developed... <laughs> Um, telescopes powerful enough to see it, see it, to be able to see out of it. Right. And cool. So we would have truly thought that we were alone in the universe. That everything would just be this <laughs> black sky above us, nothing else. So, if you're of science, do you believe in aliens? Uh, I believe there is life on other planets. But I like in our is. form, <laughs> or <laughs> trees. <laughs> um. Yes. I mean, I'm not sure if it would ever look like us or be like All us. Right. I mean, hydrogen is like the most common element in the universe. So, right. sticking hydrogen, or a couple of hydrogen atoms, and finding an oxygen atom and getting water 
not very difficult. So carbon life is definitely a thing that could exist elsewhere. Does it look anything like us, act like us, or anything like that? Who knows? Um, that would all depend right. on their evolutionary structure and how long they've gone through things. I mean, since we're closely related to primates, we are technically a primate. If there's anyone who's disagreeing with me out in the audience, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> thing. Um, so it would be an interesting idea if that was the case. But, I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson was even talking about on Europa that if we could break through the ice layer on Europa, which if anyone doesn't know, it's one of Jupiter's moons, um, he wouldn't be surprised if we had a probe down there where there might be some type of a, you know, quote unquote sea creature that goes and smiles into the camera, so to speak. He wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. at that because there's so much right. water. Um, so that could be a thing. So yeah, I do think that there is life on other planets. Are they visiting us now? No, I don't believe that in the slightest. Um, I am very familiar with the law of relativity and uh, being able to break the speed of light isn't really a thing. You can cheat it, but you can't break it. Right. Um, and like there's ways to move around the speed of light, which is what warp is. Um, but any advanced enough civilization that'd be looking at us right now, from like the closest star, they'd be seeing dinosaurs. They wouldn't be seeing humans. Right. I I always thought that you know if we were to meet up one day with aliens that they would be exa exactly us, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> mm, that's fine. <laughs> that's generally what Star Trek did. I mean, yeah. what's the thing on? It's a human with yeah. a nose job. <sighs> but that's budget reasons. <laughs> Still, it's yeah. a human with a nose job. <laughs> with the Vulcan, it's an elf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an elf with no sense of humor. <laughs> and um, all the, the stories of like the greys and all that, uh, it's amazing because all those stories of the greys and all that start happening after the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So... Right. Don't right, right, believe right. in those. You know, I keep meaning to look up exactly when that movie came out and when Star Wars came out because uh, I'm not under the belief that they were around the same time. I could be sure. completely off. Okay. No, they're, um, the they're both in the 70s. Oh. Star Wars oh, okay. is 77. So right. I want to say Close Encounters was like 78. So around okay. that time, um, I mean, I might have seen them around the same time. Like you know, like things back then were only in theaters. Um, it's probably before videotape. I forget. Um, They're both seventy-seven. Okay, okay, because I remember seeing both films and thinking, "Hey, Star Wars was pretty good. You know, it's entertaining." But I really love Close Encounters. <laughs> well, Close Encounters is great, but you know, yeah. it's a completely different style movie. Um, yeah, I know, I know. But like, yeah. Close Encounters you know, is obviously fiction, so yeah, it's but, uh, Everybody talked about Star Wars for years, and I, well, I just kept thinking, and Close Encounters was a great movie. <laughs> you know? Why is everybody? Yep. So hung up on Star Wars. <laughs> oh, I love Close Encounters. Oh. Yeah. It's definitely one of my favorite movies. Um, it's Spielberg. I mean, where can you go wrong with Spielberg? Yeah. So, sure. yeah. Well, although I have no desire to watch uh, West Side Story. <laughs> I already saw West Side Story. You know, yeah, I think sure. it's black and white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I like that's that's, but like he had a real desire to 
tell his version of it. I don't know. Yeah, at I'm least that's really, what I heard. Yeah, I'm not really sure what he's going with it, but you know, if he wants to direct it, whatever. I mean, I don't know if I'll bother seeing it. Um, yeah. What's his story? It's one, of the few, it's one of the few Romeo, Romeo and Juliet stories I like. Right. Um, and it's like one of the only adaptations of Romeo and Juliet where Juliet doesn't die. Sorry, spoiler alert right. for a movie released in the 1950s. Sorry. Oops. Something like that. Uh, well, it was a <laughs> Broadway play first, but yeah. <laughs> Musical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, spoiler alert, Juliet lives in it. I mean. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I enjoyed that because... I hate Romeo and Juliet. I had to read it like four or five times in high school, and I just absolutely despise that play. There's so many better Shakespearean plays. I liked the uh, what was the Leonardo DiCaprio version? Was that the one with Clara Dance? Yeah, yeah. I haven't I haven't watched it. Um, I'm familiar with it, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, if you're sick of the story, then it's probably no real difference. I mean, I gotta say that one of my other favorite versions of Romeo and Juliet is Romeo Must Die with Jet Li and Aaliyah. So, oh, okay, so. there you go. Because <laughs> Jet Li was badass. Yep. What was it? Um, yeah, my cousin Philip and I went to see that. I remember that. I took him to see that. As he was a huge Jet Li fan. I was just like, I like Jet Li. Let's go see it. We like bailed on a cookout or something like that. Had the cookout, we went to see Romeo Bastai. Yeah. yeah, you know. Um, he was really big. I mean, you know, he, he definitely had his time in, in the U.S. I think he was bigger in Japan or something. China, um, yeah. China, China. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I love. I liked them. them. You know, I liked Once Upon a Time in China. So, uh, okay, it was a really good movie. <clears throat> There's a lot of good Once Upon a Time movies. <laughs> Once Upon a Time in the Old West. Yep. It's upon a time in America. That's uh, yep. De Niro. Yep, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yep. That's a more recent. <laughs> yep. And that has the ending to the Manson story I wanted. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it was, it was a good flick. Uh, I really hope he does more movies. Hmm. I'd like to, I'd like Tarantino to keep directing. I mean, I love his stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think my uh, favorite is probably Reservoir Dogs, but uh, I do like it. Really yeah, I, I I don't know. I've seen that film so many times, and yeah, sort of an a lot of his other ones. Yep, I've seen Kill Bill Volume One and Volume Two an awful lot. Yeah. I think I saw Kill Bill Volume 1 like four or five times in the theater. Hmm. And I know Volume 2 I saw at least three times in the theater. I liked Volume 1 better, but it was more of the Kung Fu movie, less the Spaghetti Western. Right, yeah. But obviously, story-wise, it completes itself at least... Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I, I enjoyed them both. I mean, I thought they were great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was hoping we'd get a third one, but I don't think that's going to work out. <laughs> no, probably not. Um, yeah. It's too late now. Yeah. Also, the soundtrack of those movies was so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know, that's what he's good at, good at picking out songs of the time and theme and mm. 
Um, he almost wrote a comic I was in work on, but didn't didn't pan out. Damn, I think that was rocked. He he, uh, my friend met him at a bar. He's you know used to go to my well, where my friend's wife worked. Quentin Tarantino showed up a bunch of times, so like my friend went there um, expecting to run into him, and he did. <laughs> and so he he uh, sat with him and talked to, to Tarantino about writing his comic for an issue. And Tarantino agreed, but he flaked and never did it. So <laughs> uh, it would have been great. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see Tarantino direct a Marvel movie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'd want to see Tarantino's take on Star Wars. Just yes. Well, I hope I hope that like you know, there's been talk of him oh, Star writing Trek? A, a Star Trek movie. Yeah, I'd love to see that been, too. Yeah, that's been back and forth. Last I heard, it was back on. So I don't know. I hope it happens. I hope it happens. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah. It's like, what is Tarantino thinking that, you know, would be in this universe? <laughs> I don't know, but I guarantee there's going to be a lot of blood. <laughs> <laughs> but is it alien blood? I don't know. <laughs> everything blood, everything must bleed. <laughs> But yeah, he's a great, he's a great writer, director. Yep. Um, I love the hateful eight. Of, with oh yeah, hateful eight was great. <laughs> um, you a fan of Guillermo del Toro? Oh, oh God, yes, yes, I am. He's got a new film with uh, Bradley Cooper that's supposed to be pretty good. Hmm. Like yeah, I think um, period. Yeah, was there a trailer for it? I would yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I think the yeah, because like some somebody's seen it, like so there must be a trailer out there. Um, yeah, so I know I read something about it, at least. I think I saw a trailer on it, and I think when I saw a, it was Del Toro, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like a period piece. And I, you know, yeah, I, I like to, I like to see as much as possible without knowing anything, but that's literally impossible. And I am a sucker for trailers, so that's also doubly hard. But yeah, um, I'm the same way. I love I love trailers, <laughs> even though like they're inaccurate nine times out of ten to a certain degree, but uh, it gives you a flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say before when we were talking about school, um, I always consider myself like a good student in the sense of like, I actually like being there, even though, like, grade-wise, I wasn't super anything. Um, you know, in fact, at, at one point when I was in grade school, they advanced me um, because I, th I think my math skills were above average at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I went to the advanced class, I was totally thrown off. So then I had to go back. And I lost <laughs> some, some essentially some months of you know where I should have been. So I right. think it really f fucked me up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, see, I can see where that happened. I've always yeah. been good at math. So my issue with school is it bored me. Yeah, because I just didn't care. Uh, hmm. Well, that happens to a lot of a lot of kids. 
Hmm. You know. It's, um, um, yeah, I just didn't care about it. So, like, I saw Hallmark as just a waste of time. Hmm. And when is I went to college, I took things a lot more seriously. <laughs> yeah. But I was actually challenged, so... Yeah, yeah that's... That's what it takes with uh, students. It's because, you know, their minds start drifting and it's like, you know, I'll hold their interest. You know, it's, some teachers really are effective at holding students' interest. I had a couple of great teachers. Never every teacher. It's some stand really stand out. Yep. Uh, but it's 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 a tough gig. It's a tough gig, and oh, especially when you're when you're dealing with you know twenty, thirty, forty students, depending on how packed your classes are. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to be a teacher at one point. Oh yeah. Yep. Changed my mind on that fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's like I, I think. Everybody in our industry, to a certain extent, you know, like we want to, we want to learn as much as possible, but we also, you know, are, are, are super open to passing it on to the next generation or, you know, or our fellow peers or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I think in, in, to some degree, like we are all teachers here. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I often refer. I I have um, five students currently, so that oh, is yeah. teaching art. Yep. Nice. Uh, yep. Friends, kids mainly, but yes. Well, yeah, it's it's funny. I was asked twice in just the last year, like, "Hey, you have any good words of encouragement?" You know, my niece or my daughter or whatever um, wants to do art for a living and blah, blah, blah. It's like, sure, yeah. Just, you know, let them get in touch with me and I'll destroy them. No, I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll destroy all their hopes and dreams. It'll be my <laughs> No, they any viewers. Then they're gone now. All right. <laughs> oh. You don't get me. I was joking. I was joking. <laughs> this time it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess I guess I just didn't promote it good enough. Yeah, uh, not that big of a deal. We have a nice quiet stream. I actually got a lot of work yeah. done on this, so I'm happy. Uh, making progress. That's that's the the main point. Yep, well, I'm fairly happy with the way this is coming out. Cool. Yeah, after this, I'll make dinner. I already feel like I'm getting hungry. Hmm. I have to figure out when I want to eat. What I'm gonna eat. Yep. I'm gonna eat light. Huh. I had a um was it? I had a a bad lunch, so you know, I, I got like Wendy's, so <laughs> um, I'm like I'm way too stressed out to make anything right now because of dealing with Medicare. So I'm like right. yeah, the hell with this. I'm just gonna <laughs> Yep. So tonight for dinner will be mostly a probably a protein drink and I don't know probably like peanut butter crackers or something like that. I love I love me some peanut butter in, in yep. any shape or form. I um <laughs> I heavily calorie count right now, so um. The stupid pandemic, I put on like 50 pounds. So, I'm trying to get rid of it. That's yeah. Really good I, got, 
<laughs> I got some extra pounds, but I don't necessarily blame pandemic because I think I was game before that. So, but it it definitely hasn't helped me get rid of it. So, <laughs> when I was um before I was diagnosed with MS, I had lost a hundred pounds. I pushed myself and I lost a hundred pounds. During the pandemic, right. I, put, I found 50 of it. Actually, I lost um, well, I lost a bit more than 100 total, but during the pandemic, I found at least 50 of it again. Uh, mm. And I've lost over 10 pounds in the past few weeks. So I am back doing the what I did before, would calorie count heavily, and you know, for the most part, only drink water. Um, and I replaced a meal with the pro well, I replaced basically two meals with protein drinks. Um, right. well, the second meal has like, I said, a high amount of protein on something and that's it. And as long as I'm getting, you know, enough calories per day, I'm fine. Right. But now I'm like pretty firm on between 1800 and 2000 calories a day. So. And being a girl with estrogen, it can suck to lose weight. Mm. Yeah, so I hear. It just, it just wants to pack it on so you can, you know, have yourself some babies. <laughs> yeah, right. Guess what I'm never having. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was... Um... I was over 220 and I've lost a dozen pounds in the last month or two. Oh, well, that's great. So, so that's, that's good. Um, but I feel like I'm not, I'm not getting out enough. I'm not walking as much as I used to. So I'm trying to get back into that swing. Well, that was also where I lost a ton of weight as I was walking a lot. I go right. out on my break. Um, at work, when I work at Verizon, I go outside and I walk the building around the building twice on my 15 minute break and four times on my lunch. And then my second 15 minute break, I'd walk it twice again. And the building's huge. So <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> so I was doing that and I was playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> uh. But yeah, and then I was like, I said, I cut out like all soda and stuff like that. And come down. Yep. Yeah. yeah. My my ex. Um, the reason the reason I moved to this town uh, was to get together with Lisa. We lived together. We were together five years. We broke up, uh, but oh, we're best sorry. friends now. Well, that, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, but uh, you know, uh, what, what's the point? Um, yeah, she's she's not so much a, a walker, and actually, like you know, duration of our relationship, she, she had surgery on both her knees, um, hmm. and she, you know, she drives, and I've gotten a bit lazy being driven around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, but uh, you know, it's like I'm from New York, and I used to I used to go to go to Manhattan all the time, and uh, I'd walk around Manhattan all day, like you know, meet up with some friends downtown, meet up with other friends uptown, like you know, like it was a whole thing. Oh, yeah. Um, here, here it's like there's there's nothing that interests me. There, there's no reason to go anywhere. You know, it's like. But I, I just have to push myself. Yeah, no, I know. I know it's like, I mean, um, whenever I went to like Manhattan or something like that, like, you know, have like, you know, a girls weekend in Manhattan, things like that. Um, right. We walk everywhere. Um, and since I had some familiarity with Manhattan more than others, because I visited a lot with my friend Judy, who grew up in Queens. Um, right. You know, I learned the ways around from there. And like a couple of my friends lived in 
Jersey for a bit and we're constantly over and, you know, in Manhattan and stuff. Um, so I got to spend time with them, but, you know, it's like walking around Times Square and stuff. And, um, yeah. said, one, of the, one of the New York Comic Cons, um, went up there with my friend Marie and we went, we basically went to New York Comic Con because they were kept forcing everybody in on the weekends at, um, Verizon and we didn't want to get forced in on our weekend off. Um, to work. Right. So we're like, I bought tickets to Comic Con for us. <laughs> like, we're going to New York. <laughs> and um, because I had done an assignment for Verizon, like in a different city for a bit, they put me up in a hotel up there. Nice. And um, it, was, it was with the, the Marriott. So when I went in there, I signed up for their Marriott thing that they had and I'm like yeah i'm like even though that verizon is paying for this um i should be i get all the points i'm like huh, good deal so we yeah. stayed in Times square when we went to we went near comic con <laughs> nice like a penthouse um uh you know penthouse uh, hotel room it was nice small but it was nice yeah, it was it, right in Times Square. <laughs> it doesn't matter his size, really. If you're if you're sleeping in Manhattan, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I've I've done that a couple of times. Uh, well, I mean, you know, like when I was in my twenties, at a friend who lived, uh, what was it like seventy eighth Street, just off of. Like across the street from Central Park, mm. and I basically spent most of my weekends in my twenties there, um, and that that was just just north of where uh, John Lennon was staying, you know, the Ooh. hotel yeah. that he was at, um, and that that was amazing. Like he had a studio apartment, you know, um, which I found out later that he was paying like a hundred dollars a month or something like it, it was rent control um god i want that place well it's it you know his, his mother took it from like he was his uncle's apartment and he got it for the same price as his uncle who left the apartment so he grabbed it up um, but his mother, unfortunately, was a little nuts, and she was like, I want that apartment. She took it, lost it, and nobody had it. So it was oh, like, that's nice. bah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, he had, had it for many, many, many years. Um, but, yeah, so and then another time I was cats. Uh, uh, well, I, I cat sat for Joe Quesada back in the day. Um, hmm. And, and uh, another friend of mine uh, who had a place, place more downtown. Uh, so, yeah, on a, a number of different occasions, never on my own dime. Yeah. <laughs> at, at other pieces, other people's places. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was always amazing to wake up, walk out the door, and whatever you wanted was a block away. It's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. It was like we went. Um, we were um, we're going down to. Um, was it? We checked in the hotel. And we we're like, we're gonna go down to Comic Con. So, and we step out, and um, she's like, "Oh, wh where do we go?" And I'm like, "Oh, we just head up to the corner. We'll just basically walk in a straight line. We'll hit, we'll hit the Jarvis Center." And she's like, yeah. "We're not going through any bad parts." I'm like, "No, no, we're not going through any place bad." And she's like, "Where are we walking through?" I'm like, "Hell's Kitchen." <laughs> and she's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, literally, we're going to be walking basically right through Hell's Kitchen." And she's like, "Isn't Hell's Kitchen bad?" I'm like, "For maybe for walking around there at night and the." Back alleyways, we're gonna be down the main road. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I was walking around Manhattan when back in the seventies. In seventies, it was pretty dangerous. 
um, yeah, and sketchy. Yeah, the and... dangerous one too. So yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We it's had like, a combat and... zone. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, when, once once Disney got into Forty Second Street, uh, it kind of really changed. It became more family oriented. Yep. As opposed to like all the triple X karate movie theaters along Forty Second Street. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was basically the combat zone. It was all the triple X places and things. And yeah. 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 Chinatown yeah. was um, Chinatown was a scary place. That was the yeah, seventies and eighties. Yeah, and now it's, it's just you know, now. It's just busy. Like I mean, yeah. I haven't been there for years really, but. But every oh. time I went, because I used to go, I used to go there to go. You ever go to Pearl Paint? Mm-hmm. It's an amazing art store. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with Pearl. Yeah, um, I think they closed down. I believe I could be wrong, but oh, um, they. they oh, how many floors? It was like five or seven floors. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was huge. Floor, yeah, each floor was something different. Paints, one floor paper, next floor it's different, broken up different ways. But uh, yeah, it was the streets were always crowded. They had all the crap stuff out, out and about, and crap stores, and uh, but it was always, always entertaining. Always <laughs> great to be around like the, that many people, you know. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I, when I walk around town and I'm on the street and there's one person coming towards me, I get nervous. But meanwhile, when I was in Manhattan, there's thousands of people around me. I felt safe. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just a, yeah. So we got, um, <laughs> here asking, stop being the warrior be- from what, Disneyland. Um, yeah. 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 Basically. <laughs> It's it's safer to get from the Bronx to Brooklyn now. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't even live in New York. I know this stuff. <sighs> I spent a lot of weekends in New York, so yeah. So yeah. I, had, yeah. I had friends who lived up there, and you know, I'd go up for the weekend and stuff all the time because I love doing it. People ask mm-hmm. me, like, why... Why are you insane? Why did you move to Kentucky? You're in the middle of the country, and you know there's nothing there. Blah blah blah. You know, it's like I lived in. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I I I met her because I came to Kentucky. That's really the only reason. I didn't come to Kentucky for her. Um, you know, but I I was living in New York, and you know, my my dad passed away in '88. My mom finally passed away in 2006 um and at that point you know my two older brothers were out of new york already and it was just me and jimmy and you know we pretty much decided before even before my mom mom passed away that you know we're probably moving out of new york um once she does and and that she was the only reason we were still sticking around Um, it's really like, uh, you know, as I saw it, it's, I, I, uh, really need to make six figures in in order to live in New York now (laughs) Uh, and I'm not. So, so, uh, we get, it came from the Rios here, uh, which is Mark Torres, which is the, the creator of the, the very comic I'm inking right before your eyes. Uh, oh, it's okay. funny. There are YouTube streamers that just walk around New York doing live streams and they get dollars for it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, if I was if I was streaming back then, I, I would have been in prime territory. If I stream around here, nobody cares. <laughs> um, oh and you God, were ahead so of the times, Pete. <laughs> it's so funny to walk around like rural Kentucky live streaming and being like, and over here we have a cow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, another grass field. 
<laughs> Another tree. Guess what we're doing tonight, folks? Tipping. That doesn't tipping. mean we're going to be leaving things at restaurants. We're going tipping. <laughs> we're pushing over cows. <laughs> I have I have never done that, and I don't condone it. Um. <laughs> 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 My yes. senior year of high school, a uh, kid I know, I don't know how he did it. He got a cow into our cafeteria. Oh, cool. Literally, he just came in one day and there was a cow in the cafeteria. And I'm just like, Derek did this. I don't know how. Yeah. He... And I was right. Was, was it revenge or something? or Derek was just... Or weird. just... Oh, okay. Just for fun of it. Derek just did things that I refer to as boys being stupid. So, yeah. And he was quite good at it. Uh, <laughs> I remember in uh, I was... class, sitting behind him, and he's sitting there, and yeah. he has like a pin like on his the back of his pen or something. Why on right. earth he has this, I have no idea. But he does. And he's like making like he's gonna put it into the electrical socket, and I'm just like looking at okay. it. And I'm like, "You won't do it. it, it I'll get it." <laughs> and um, <laughs> the noise that came out of there was horrible. Um, mm. It was loud. <laughs> the lights all flickered. <laughs> oh, no, this was a very old school, so. <laughs> all right. Um, when he pulled out the, um, the, um, the pin from the light socket, like, literally little bolts of lightning were, like, jumping out of it. <laughs> nice. And the teacher was just like, I don't know what you did, just leave. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's like, I, I always wondered what would happen, and but I never felt compelled to try, so... This is something I've noticed that boys do stupid things for no reason. Girls is usually <laughs> because of a boy. So hey. that's not entirely true. I mean I can't be I can't be in I can't like hold like yeah, I can't be that nice to my gender in that situation. I've seen girls do some pretty stupid shit. <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, it's definitely you know, um, I never did anything extremely stupid. I mean, I don't, I never had broken bones or anything. Um, but I, I did challenge my life <laughs> existence uh, when I rode, rode around the neighborhood on my bike, you know. Um, mm. I, only came, I only came close that I'm, that I remember at the moment, maybe I blocked some stuff out, but. Uh, where I where I felt I was really young and I fell off my bike and I looked up and there was a, a car just screeching sh <laughs> to a halt. <laughs> Let's see. So you uh, want to read that? From, yeah, it came from the radio. That's a TV show that I always wanted to do. Call it "What Would Happen yeah. If." <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm with you on that. Oh. <laughs> The um, that'd be fun. Uh, there was a girl in my class, I don't know how she did it. Um, three times in the same year, she got hit by a car. Oh, Jesus, I, I don't know how she did it. She, yeah, it, it was just one of those things. <laughs> it's like cars were attracted to her crossing the street. Mm. I don't know if she didn't look or whatnot. I mean. She must have broken her leg like uh, just too many times. <laughs> all right. well, that's all that happened to her. <laughs> There's always one kid like you know in crutches walking around braces and you know. Hmm. You know, I know there's <laughs> definitely like a lot of a lot of boys that are. are Daredevils. Yep. Hmm. 
Yeah, I never really understood it, but you know, it happened. So, <laughs> I'd see people do things. Then <laughs> my general comment was, "Well, did you expect anything different to happen?" So, <laughs> they <Yeah>. said yes. <laughs> I, I'm not impressed. Something oh, I, didn't I, think I, I did precisely it. like that. <laughs> yeah, something I did when I was older. Um, still, still living in New York, and this wasn't it dangerous, but not dangerous. Like, like uh, some friends of mine. Uh, I guess they did this thing on a regular basis, like maybe once a year or whatever, and they told me about it, and I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. Um, it was a, a hospital that was abandoned, and they just wanted to go walk through it. Um, and, um, you know, like, supposedly it was haunted or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, anyway, it was, a, it was a good, a, a really good-sized complex uh, out in Staten Island, uh, New York, and um, it's where they, you know, at at the time when it was still active, which was, you know, definitely centuries ago, um, it was all, like all to cure tuberculosis. Uh, so they were like just massive buildings, massive wings. Uh, and yeah, it was in horrible, horrible shape. Uh, mm -hmm. it was the kind of place where we were walking down the, the hallways and literally the paint from the, from the walls was piled up on the ground. <laughs> and it, it was like walk, walking through snow drifts. Um, and most of the ceilings were gone, uh, but there were still ceiling, ceilings, pieces of ceilings left. Like, literally, the place could have fell on us at any point. Um, but the cool thing was, you know, they had a gigantic courtyard, um, and uh, when we first got there and then we met up with them later there was a, a two gangs of kids and they were playing paintball <laughs> while we were there <laughs> that's awesome uh, that's awesome so, yeah it was um, like oh we're we're you know ghost hunting but there's also this crazy kids play, play paintball game here <laughs> i used to do ghost hunting um, and I've done yeah, some urban yeah. exploring, looking for ghosts and all that. I used to be a member of the Society of American Magicians. And yeah, we would go yeah. in and ghost hunt places for people who were like, oh, our house is haunted. And we'd go in and show them how they have no ghosts. Um, yeah. One of the places we did it for was um, the Danvers Psychiatric Hospital up in Danvers, Massachusetts. And we were in there shortly before they filmed the movie Session 9. Um, Sounds we, Session 9 is a, it's an amazing movie. I highly recommend it. It's one of my absolute favorite horror movies ever made. It has my favorite line in all movies is in it. Um, but when it's when they they shot it and they basically shot it right on site and the Danvers Mental Hospital doesn't exist anymore. They ripped it down and it's now condominiums. Um, but the place had this amazing gothic look to it. It was it's a beautiful building and it was an absolute death trap walking through it in certain areas. Um, those areas we didn't go into because we didn't want to you know haunt the place ourselves. But the only thing that we found signs of was homeless people living there, mm. which we didn't care about. It's like, whatever. So, hey. um, but yeah, they had us go in there to try to debunk the hauntings and we're like, it's a gigantic old building. Yes, you're going to hear noises in it. Why? There's this thing called the wind. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
but yeah, we'd go into like we'd do ho- houses, we'd investigate hauntings at houses and stuff like that. And um, one person like rigged his house. You can't fool magicians, especially when there's like, <laughs> six of us. Right. We're going to figure out what you're doing. It's yeah. just it's not going to take us long to do it. That's um, nice. But yeah, so that that was like some of the stuff that I did. Um, so yes, when people say, do you believe in ghosts? I say, I want to believe. <laughs> but I've done a lot of ghost hunting. I've seen nothing to, to confirm to me a ghost is real. <sighs> yeah. Uh, you know, I've had some friends that totally believe it and they watch all those paranormal shows. And it's, you know, like that stuff's fun to watch once in a while. Oh, um, I love watching but... that stuff. I literally sit down and I, and I debunk how they did it. Or what they yeah. actually saw. And there was a there's a YouTube station. Um, they they were on a debate, and it's like they called themselves like Universal Paranormal, and they were on a modern day debate thing against somebody saying that ghosts were real, and they had the footage to prove it, and they played the footage, and I'm like, so a dust ball. <laughs> not seen it and they're like oh there's something there and like you know our motion sensitive camera wouldn't have moved if this wasn't the case and I'm like so somebody wasn't off camera who just moved their hand to get it to turn <laughs> and they're like no that didn't happen I'm like okay prove it <clears throat> I'm like give me the I said to him give me the un was it the raw file the raw video file right and right right I will look at it, and I'll determine if there's something there or not. Because I can just hit it with certain filters. And they're like, well, it's, what's on YouTube is our raw file. I'm like, no, it's not. YouTube compresses the file. <laughs> yeah. And um, So then I was looking on... Um, now, this is me just as an audience member in the thing, asking questions of them. Uh, so I went to their YouTube page. I looked on it, and they said they had actual footage of the Titanic sinking. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, cameras weren't that advanced in 1912. <laughs> you could shoot movies. Hell, you could shoot movies that had sound. Yeah. it's um, You're not going to get a steady cam shot, though, in those times. Um, or... Well, you're not going to get any type of uh, quote-unquote talkie in those times with a crank camera. Because they're all crank cameras in 1912. You're going to hear the cranking. And who's ever holding the phonograph while um, while you're actually doing this? And then you have some people who are, you know, filming everything and cranking. Because cranking the film, holding the camera, you know, and setting the shot and all that... Yeah, um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not going to happen. And um, yeah, they just basically re-edited, whoever made the video basically re-edited uh, footage from different Titanic movies. And I think they used the movie Ghost Ship in at least one of the scenes. Uh, that's phony. That was a good movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and they, they basically made it look like it was, they, they hit it with a few filters and made it look like it was something else. Uh, yeah, they have all their comments turned off on their YouTube page, so it's like, yeah, you guys know you're a fake, and you won't let anyone tell you that. Oh. Mystery solved. <laughs> as soon as I see something like that, I'm like, well, your credibility just went out the window. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I didn't believe you before. I really don't believe you now. Yeah. This is actual footage. No, no, it's not. <laughs> I've seen Titanic too many times. I'm literally the target audience, so <laughs> I'm going to recognize the scenes. Right, right. Oh, it was funny when I was in, when I was seeing the Titanic for the first time, and I was talking a little bit about the history of the Titanic because I've always had a fascination with the ship. Um. And what was it? My boyfriend could tell I was excited, and you know he was entertaining me at the time, just letting me babble. 
and uh, there was some woman who's just like, you better not spoil this movie for me. And I just looked at her and, uh, you know, the boat sinks in the end. <laughs> it's kind of like when I was talking about X-Men with some friends when we saw the first action X-Men movie in the theaters. I was talking about some of the cameos that I saw in the in the, in the trailers. And right. the guy's like, you better not spoil this movie for me. And I turned to my friend, I'm like, did you hear how Magneto win? Uh, how Magneto loses in the end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would hate you. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I, I might probably know, but no, no, I, I didn't. Actually... I didn't say how he lost. I'm like, you know, it's like you know, you know, loses in the end. That was well, it. yeah, that, Magneto loses. That's, that's, a, that's, what I said. that's a giveaway, though. Yeah, exactly. But I said that yeah. the look on the guy's face was—he was so pissed. He's just like, yeah. you know, I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even talking about anything important in the movie. I'm talking about cameos that you can uh, see uh, in the trailer. Like, if you didn't see yeah. the trailer, that's not my problem. <laughs> I have it plastered over TV constantly. Yeah, they did yeah. that. But yeah. yeah the fun I had. But I do, I do remember when I went to that hospital in Staten Island. Like, you know, they were a, a, probably a, a pale, you know, version of what they were when they were active and and you know not ruins, essentially. But the buildings looked amazing. Like, you know, oh, yeah. just the, ar- the architecture just, of that style, the architecture yeah. of that time, and. You know, especially like the architecture of a, of a hospital is really interesting. You know, mm-hmm. um, and back then everything was like you know they made everything bigger and yeah, it was really cool and just like yeah, it was a creepy experience just walking around and it's like you know oh, yeah. after we did that I was like I was like yeah we that was really dangerous. <laughs> that was like. Wow, we were dumb. <laughs> we were so dumb. You know, what would happen if we did that? And we did. And yeah, we could have died. All died. So yep. all crush us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, when I was first getting into ghost hunting myself, I did a little urban trespassing. So, mm. you know, that was a thing. Um so yes, I've done my own stupid things and not getting caught. So yeah. <laughs> and it involved yeah. the boy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, so uh, I mean, most of the stuff, whenever I would do any of the early ghost hunting stuff, I'd just go to a cemetery and look around places where it's supposed to be haunted. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went to a few places that were quote-unquote haunted. Haunted cemeteries. Haunted buildings. And yeah, it was fun. I have good memories of it. Yep. Don't regret doing it. <laughs> no, it's all one of these days. One of these, days one of these days, I'm definitely going to do a horror comic. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's you know, it's like not even necessary that I'm into horror per se. But, like, most of the novels I read early on were Stephen King <laughs> and some other mm-hmm. horror writers, uh, Clyde Barker and... Oh, yeah, I've read, else. I've read, like, all of Barker. I, I love Barker. Oh. Uh, um, I'll tell you uh, a story really quick, and then we can uh, finish out our stream here. Um, mm-hmm. There were three signings that uh, Clyde Barker were at in New York um, like within a, a, a week or two period. Um, the first one was a, a store and uh, the second two were uh, actually comic conventions. Um, and I, I saw him at all three and I brought books and comics to all three. And so the, the third one that I showed up on, 
Um, he's like, hey, Pete, how's it going? That's awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. He's like, yeah, it's like, I, I, I know it was like a short period of time and it was, it was in his face, you know, for the third time. But still, I don't expect that. It's like, <laughs> it's like you remember my name. Yeah, it was great. He's a good guy. Crazy writer. So, uh, yeah, we've been going two hours. Um, we can uh, call it... Um, Oh, like I weird. mentioned, what was weird? I lost Did, connection briefly. Oh, I was wondering. <laughs> it sounded blank. <laughs> yeah, I just lost uh, connection it's, briefly. It's probably the ghost taking um, revenge. No. no, it's my VPN was screwing up, so I had to mess with it. Uh, my my internet went out last night, late last night, uh, for fifteen minutes. Um, what, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, just, uh, yeah, Justin Belmont will be here tomorrow night promoting some books, uh, mm -hmm. so people can come and sign up and you're all, you know, like, even though, like I'm having a guest, you're, you're, you're here for oh, yeah. whenever you want to show up. So you'll be here oh, yeah, tomorrow. I thought I, I thought I was, I thought I was here all the time. So you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I'm your partner in crime, right? That's right. That's right. No, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. just making sure. I don't assume, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to overdo it, but I, I want to get guests on. Uh, oh, there, there have been times when I've overdone it, overbooked, and it cuts into my schedule. So I try not to be too crazy at the moment. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Justin will be here tomorrow nice easy conversation um and uh yeah fun and we'll, we'll watch the trailer and see some art and talk about his career thus far and all that jazz and of course you know as i do when guests arrive or you know the same as when they don't arrive i'll still be working on uh what i'm working on so that doesn't make a difference uh, people, you know, like guests tend to like that format because mm -hmm. it's not like pressure on them <laughs> to be, be entertaining for the whole time. Um, but yeah, th it would be fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll set up that stream and, and uh, send you a link and send Justin a link as well uh, when I get a chance. Yeah, for sure. No worries. So I thank mean, you. I can plug in. I see everything you make. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm doing at all times. It's yes, not creepy dude. at all. <laughs> you, Peter. I'm always there. Peter. Watching you. Watching me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, I'll be watching you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely starving, like, like we mentioned before. So we get into s some dinner soon. Um, yeah. yeah. So like, like this video. Follow us both. There are links below the video in the video description box for both of us, as well as mm -hmm. a, a lot of other links to other things. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if there's nothing that you, you know, if you don't see something specific that you want me to add to that, I, I will. Um, uh, like this video, subscribe if you haven't become a patron for both of us. Uh, mm -hmm. All the links down below. Uh, am I missing anything? Just, you know, usual mumbo jumbo. Um, thank you for visiting. Thank you for watching live or after the fact. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, this channel definitely hasn't been getting a lot of comments, uh, if at all. Um, and uh, usually it's spam. But um, <laughs> yeah, leave a, leave a comment after the fact. I would love yeah. to hear your thoughts on anything we've talked about or 
I does Salazar Art Nation. Good to rock the merch. Yeah, promoting his own <laughs> stuff. Hello. At least say yeah. hello first. Um, yeah, God, you show up and start <laughs> dumping crap. Let's see how it is. <laughs> Spam is delicious. Spam. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, no. Just no. Have you actually had spam? I mean, come on. <laughs> Spam's delicious. No, no, it's not. He's. <laughs> He's oh, yeah. Then we got the. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I'm going to close this out unless you have anything to add uh, that I haven't mentioned. Now's no, your chance. Um, no, I'm pretty good. Um, I had a fun time. You know, it's always great sitting here chatting about, you know, everything and nothing all at once. Um, yes. <laughs> and getting work done. That's what it's all about making comics. That's yep. what 